so very quick background, okay. I'm pretty old. Uh, I work on a lot of things, including mathematical areas that have nothing to do with um, computational, with, with social sciences. And I've been here since the beginning, I've given lots of talks. Those who have been to all of them, which will be nobody here, would uh, see some similarities, but there's also some new stuff. So, starting with the sort of general idea of voting or aggregation of preferences, let's say, there's a huge number of rules, which that word cloud on the left is supposed to show, that have been named in the literature. That's probably not all of them. And there's a huge number of axiomatic properties that they satisfy, and it's really difficult to navigate through this jungle of them all. So one important um, unifying principle is something which Arkady Piotr and Peter Thelkin have worked a lot on, the idea of distance rationalization. Um, more generally you, generally, you think about having a profile of preferences of some, in some format, that's the input, you have an outcome, which is the result of your rule. It could be uh, a social choice, or it could be a multi-winner setup. You can have many different possibilities. And there are often, in many applications, there are some very easy outcomes that you can decide. If everyone has exactly the same preference order and you're voting for a president, then it's relatively easy to work out who you should choose. Uh, in general, what we do is come up with the distance measure to these so-called consensus sets, and we use this standard sort of Voronoi idea of looking at uh, what, what is the closest consensus result, and those different colored regions there correspond to um, inputs, preferences, profiles, which have the same outcome under whatever your rule is. Okay, that's the general principle, so try to understand things. You decompose your rule somehow into a consensus notion and a distance notion, and then you, all your arguing can be done at that level. And so I've been working a bit on this last year, well, for several years, but publishing, submitting last year. Uh, so a very systematic way of deriving properties of the rule from its components, and perhaps even more interestingly, in the case of uh, anonymous rules or rules that are homogeneous, which means that uh, if you clone everyone the same number of times, you get the same result. Um, you get to some interesting mathematical areas, some buzzwords being uh, Wasserstein or Kantorowicz metric, optimal transport, finite dimensional Banach spaces, things like that. So these are quite unusual mathematical ideas that haven't come up much in uh, social choice before. So those are some of the things we're working at on and the idea would be to move on next to different models, different output models. So the inputs are the same, it's usually, usually, or they could be different inputs, you could have different types of ballots or preferences, but the same general unifying principle should be extended more generally. Not to say that no one has worked on this, but there's a lot more work that could be done. Right, next topic, I mentioned matching on the other slide. Another word for that might be resource allocation. You're trying to match items to agents, for example. Lots of those things up there. Uh, very important practical applications, school assignment, uh, medical residence, these kinds of things. There's lots of, uh, it's tricky because in the case of voting, if everyone has the same preferences, then it's easy because you know what's going to happen. It's very easy to work out what to do. Uh, that's the hardest case in some sense for resource allocation. If everyone wants the same resource, right? It's not a public, single public good, it's the private one. And so, more complicated. Um, recently, I've been working quite a bit, um, and we've introduced some new algorithms for the so-called house allocation problem, which is also called one-sided matching. Um, those algorithms actually are... Um, quite competitive when you look at the welfare results, even though their axiomatic properties are not fantastic. So here's an example uh, from some simulation that we did, uh, where the top one, top group, the higher is worse here. This is the welfare loss that you're, you're getting uh, under various um, assumptions. And the top one, on top blue line is the standard um, 
random serial dictatorship, which has lots of nice axiomatic properties, but uh, its wel welfare results are not very good. And the one in the purple one is the new one that we've introduced, which actually was inspired by a Christmas party that I went to three years ago, interestingly enough. Um, now, electoral systems, done quite a bit on electoral systems. Uh, these pictures are intended to, to talk, look about predict, uh, talk about prediction and how hard it is. Uh, uh, that's the left-hand picture. And the right-hand picture is talking about evaluation of electoral systems uh, in terms of multiple criteria. So there are two criteria here. You want to be kind of at the bottom left. Um, you want to be down here to be in a really a perfect system. And the color here indicates uh, a certain parameter that you can try to optimize in your electoral system. And the question is, which is better? Which is the best value of the parameter? Are we doing some kind of optimization um, by criterion optimization? So you want to find the Pareto frontier, but you have a whole lot of scatter in these points. So you've got distributions rather than single points. So I still haven't worked out exactly the methodology we're going to use here, but that's, that's really the, the kind of picture we're talking about, give you a rough idea of the kind of things we're talking about. So we've done all sorts of stuff involving simulations, um, practical submissions to government, um, currently working on interesting models for, of um, artificial preference data. Uh, using urn models and some predictions, some other political science applications involving swing, and uh, then we'll continue to talk about optimizing systems. So that's the sort of that stream. And the final stream I wanted to talk about was uh, networks. Doing a lot of stuff on networks because my PhD students are working in that area. Um, for example, this network here. The question is, is it balanced? Balance is a technical term, which is not difficult to work out. Each edge is either plus or minus, and a network is balanced if every cycle has an even number of negative edges in it. Uh, yeah, friend or foe. Yeah, this, this one. This here would be uh, <coughs> an ally or an enemy. Uh, and you can have... So it's not hard to tell whether something is balanced or not because you really can apply a breadth-first search, basically, so well-known graph algorithms to do that. But what's hard is, if it's not balanced, working out how to make it balanced with the minimum amount of, uh, of change to the network, removing the number, like flipping a minimum number of edges in order to make it balanced. That's a very well-known NP-hard problem. I don't know. I haven't looked at everything there, but the, the, these are all... So it, it's created by some... They're both vertices because they are all actors in some sense. So Germany was part, I guess, of this P5 plus 1 or whatever, wasn't it? It was one of those deals with Iran, for example. The interesting thing here is that, um, yeah, if you go through and trace everything through, you see that Iran and the US, for example, here have quite positive relations in many ways. I guess the other thing that's clear is that everyone hates um, ISIS, pretty much. Yeah. It's based on uh, well, it's here. It's 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 come from some source, but it's based on um, it's based on formal alliances, and um, so there are formal treaties and alliances, right? And also um, news reports. So there's some judgment required there. Someone is making a judgment here. Yeah, th this is not a complete graph, but it's a graph that shows the various relations. There are some non-relations, like you know, Russia and China don't have a direct relation in this sense, right? Okay. So it just means that that person didn't collect the data. They're obviously are have strong relations between Russia and China. Uh, but there might, the, there's no formal alliance. There's probably no formal alliance or enmity. Yeah. At some point, you get to the boundary of a network, right? So you have to decide where you stop. You could get rid of these external players if you like, but they could be relevant. Some of them are not states either, right? 
um, like here, for example. This is a few years old as well, so it's not going to be the same as now. But th this, this uh, is an example of a signed network where you have plus or minus on the edges, right? So that's, I'm just giving that as a, as a sort of a, uh, a taste of a problem. Um, I'll zoom down to the second point because... Um, this idea of, of working out whether something is balanced or not, if it is or isn't, is easy to determine. But measuring partial balance, how close you are to being balanced, is not something that's been properly analyzed. So we've tried to axiomatize that and, some, and looked at it performance on various um, real-world networks. So that, that was uh, one paper there. It might be a bad thing to have, but it's a, in certain contexts, it's a good thing. Yeah. Social settings, usually it's considered to be good. Otherwise, you have a lot of tension. You have friends of friends who are enemies and things like that. But here, it may or may not be a good thing because the such perfect balance here would, in fact, be equivalent to a bipartition of the network into two sort of Cold War alliances, which may not necessarily be a good thing. But it is something which is used a lot in a lot of applications, not just here, but in physics. And it's, it's a very basic concept. Yeah. So whether we want to actually, um, yeah. So first of all, we're trying to increase, improve the theory. Then we, if you look under the next, there, we're trying to actually work out how to compute what we think of as the best performing overall measure of uh, performance. That unfortunately is. It's an NP-hard uh, problem to compute this thing, exactly. We also have some other problems in the networks area. So um, Addison mentioned decide. We'd use that in some at length um, to experiment on undergraduates a few years ago and finally have submitted something based on that. Uh, diffusion model in the network. Uh, sorry, diffusion study, experimental study from which we hope to develop interesting models. Uh, we already have enough to know that the original model is not very good, so we're trying to improve on that. Also, looking at a completely different network, which is a citation network of all New Zealand laws. Laws cite other laws, usually for the purposes of definitions, but sometimes for amendment and for various other reasons. Trying to uh, understand the structure and evolution of that as a complex network. Yeah, it, 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 it's still, there's a lot of very interesting questions involved there. We've tried really hard to find, let's say, legal historians, people who are quantitative political scientists in, in New Zealand, and we haven't done too well. We've had one, uh, we've talked to a lot of people. We are intending to publish in the New Zealand Law Journal, which will be a first thing first, uh, and just to ask the legal community if there's any interesting questions that they can think of we can use this network for. We have, there's a lot you can say from the network science point of view, whether it has relevance in the application area is going to be an interesting. So we're going to work on that. One thing is very clear is that the law has become extremely more, much more complex. Not only are there are more laws, there are more interrelations between them. The density has been increasing over time. It's hard to understand exactly why that is, but immediately, but you know you can look at the various hypotheses. So those are the things there, very quick uh, overview. And as I said, they're always looking for some new people to work with, and I'm going to be talking at least once this year in our seminar, so be based to some extent on feedback. Right. Thanks. on demand, we can ask Mark to talk more yeah. about one particular... Yeah, uh, you can think about it. Another. Have a think about it. It's all there, yeah. and the because slides will be up there. Yeah, catch up.